You're in the woods, in the depths of night. You're searching for something. Your life has been an aimless journey of twists and turns that seem to be leading nowhere. You've done evil. You've struggled. You've never known what you're supposed to do with your life. The stars are shining down, and darkness surrounds. And as you turn in the cold night, you hear coyotes howling. Something within leads you up along an ancient path, up a steep slope. And around the corner, you see something burning. A fire is roaring in the night, and it doesn't go out. It seems to beckon you forward. You feel something present in this place as you approach. It's God. You fall to your knees in revelation of his glory. (coughs) Moses experienced this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you interrupt our aimless wandering. And call us to mission. I thank you, Lord, that you reveal yourself powerfully. We pray, Lord, that you would now minister to us through this message. We pray that I would not be heard from, but that you would be heard from, Lord Almighty. That is our request this morning, Lord. We want to encounter you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So just like God called Moses to the burning bush and toward his great calling on his life, each of us have been called out of the dead-end ways of the world. God has given our lives purpose when we used to be aimless wanderers. God said to Moses from the consuming fire, The cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Moses' response is probably similar to ours. Who am I to go? That is a question that we often ask ourselves, isn't it? Who am I to go? How can I go? I mean, Moses, he's, he's larger than life, but me, I have, I have problems. I'm, I feel weak at times. I'm sure Moses never experienced anything like that. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Moses was just a person, just like us. God is calling us, each of us. It's amazing to me. As William Booth said, who is to go? You. You are saved. You say your sins are forgiven and that you belong to the family of God. You say the promises apply to you. Why not the commands? Have one and shirk the other. (coughs) Never, never, never. They are united. Do not say you are a child and not a servant. You must go yourself. This is a personal calling which comes down through the centuries to you. You cannot evade it and remain true to yourself and your God. And it's it's gone down now from William Booth through the Salvation Army to this very moment to you. So we must go no matter how high the cost And I I can assure you that difficulties will come in officership. But I want to encourage you, hold fast to your calling. Hold fast to your mission. And what is our mission? We do many things in the Salvation Army, but there is one primary mission. Your primary mission is not giving out food. Your primary mission is not social services. Your primary mission is not budgets and finances. Your primary mission is to make the winning of souls the first purpose of your life. It's easy to get caught up in good things that we ought to do, but lose touch with the most important thing, 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hold fast to your calling. Don't ever give up, even when you've worked to exhaustion. Can anyone relate over the last month or so? (laughs) Even when you're sick. Even when you're bedridden. Even when you're burnt out and overwhelmed. Even when your DHQ treats you poorly. Even if, God forbid, your wife or husband leaves you. Even when no one seems to care. Hold on. Hold on for the good times. And there will be a lot of good times, too. When someone new joins the church and gets saved. When a baby is born and you get to do the dedication. When you lead an elderly woman from this life and into the next. When you stop what you're doing for a moment at the core and you just stop and you think... I love what I do. I absolutely love what I do. Hold out for those moments. Because God will deliver people, real people with real lives, from bondage to sin to, to freedom in Christ. Real lives, real people will be transformed because you're willing to speak the truth of the gospel. Because you were willing to go. Real people who are lost out there in bondage in Egypt will come to freedom. God brings people out of bondage to sin entirely of himself, just as the Israelites crossed over dry ground. God himself parted the waters, but Moses lifted up his staff. He was there with the people. He lifted his staff. God God did the miracle, but Moses did have to be there holding up that staff. And in the same way, when you lift up your voice and speak the gospel, souls will be saved. Not by you, but by the power of Christ. But because you were willing to be there to speak it, people will be saved. And the journey, it doesn't end there. After the Israelites crossed over dry land, they began their journey to the promised land. And in the same way as we lead cores in the future, we will be like Moses, journeying with the Israelites in the wilderness. We in the Salvation Army, don't, we don't believe in once saved, always saved. We don't just cross on dry ground and then stand there at the other side. It's again, well, I'm finished. Maybe I'll go for a swim. (laughs) This Christian life is a lifelong journey of obedient faith in Christ. As the Ninth Doctrine says, we believe that continuance in a state of salvation depends upon continued obedient faith in Christ. So, when we are officers, we will walk with our people our core families, as we journey together through the wilderness and toward the promised land. We'll be there to help our people overcome sorrows, challenge them to to defeat sin in their lives in the spirit. We'll be there to guide our people toward acts of service and missional lifestyle. We'll be there to face the strongholds of Jericho, the dry deserts of affliction, the idolatry of, of, of golden calves, and the bitter waters of dark nights of the soul all alongside our people, walking with them. So I hope you're excited for this journey. I am. I'm really excited. And right now we're all being prepared for this bright future. And I want to tell you something today. I want to tell you something if you're afraid, if you're feeling like you're struggling, like you can't do this. You will do great things for Christ. Yes, you will. God did not make a mistake when he chose you. That's right. He didn't. No mistake. It's you. You may feel weak. You may feel empty. You may feel overwhelmed. But let me tell you a secret. So did Moses. Guarantee it. So did Gideon. So did Peter. So did Paul. And so did Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was overwhelmed. Jesus said to his disciples on that fateful night, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. 
If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Ouch. Jesus Christ loves you, so remain in his love. Jesus, he doesn't just call us servants. He calls us friends. He helps us to obey him. So in conclusion, two applications from these scriptures. First of all, while you're here on campus, build your prayer and personal Bible study life every day. Not just a quick prayer or 10 minutes a day, but spend real time with God. Cling to God. Moses climbed Mount Sinai searching for the Creator. And he found Him. And if we neglect the prayer life in our officership, we'll be useless as officers. There will be no power behind what we do. Secondly, get real about sin in your life. Fight those battles now, today, while you're on campus. Once we're, in the fetal, once we're in the field, it'll be much harder. While you're here, put to death the sins that are in the flesh. And come to love the doctrine of Wesleyan holiness. Dare to believe that Christ will fully deliver you from every sin you struggle with. Amen. Jesus says, you did not choose me. I chose you. And Jesus called us into the Salvation Army. And he has appointed us to go and bear good fruit by saving souls and making disciples. So seek God in the dry mountains of pain and darkness. And the consuming fire of God's presence will find you. Remain in the love of Christ on this journey through unconditional obedience as we lead our people home to paradise. If you do these things, you will be a truly great officer of the Salvation Army. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have called us, of all people, to this great calling. We know that you have chosen us for this, so we are not afraid. We put our trust in you even when we feel so weak. We know that you will carry us and guide us and lead us as you did Moses, so that we can bless our people. In Jesus' name.